A Christmas Story How the Grinch Accepted Jesus Written and Illustrated by Kyle Joris There once was a boy who was special and untamed. People thought he was stupid, crazy, disgusting, and lame. His name was the Grinch. People didn't know where he came from. He could have been from the woods, the moon, or maybe part of the sun. People called him a criminal. Nobody knows quite why. People told so many stories that were probably lies. To church one day, he decided to attend. He heard a guy named Jesus really loved him and would be his best friend. He was so very poor, he didn't know what to wear. He smelled kind of strange, but he didn't care. As he walked in the doors, an expected thing happened. People started staring, glaring, ignoring, and laughing. He thought, this isn't like Jesus. That's not very kind. Why are they doing that? Why, why, why? He sat through the sermon, and everyone stared at this lost, smelly boy, abandoned and scared. He didn't feel welcome. He was very upset, but he thought, it's not over just quite yet. He jumped on his feet and ran up on stage, acting like a wild animal who belonged in a cage. He spilled the communion and ate all the bread and smacked a strange elder right on the head. He ruined the service and ran all around. Some people started laughing as if he were a clown. It made him more angry, so he glared at the crowd and yelled, You people are liars, and yet you're so proud. Would Jesus do this? I don't think so. We all deserve hell, and I deserve to just go. With a hop in his step and a grin on his face, he walked out of service, offering not one person grace. You're a sinner, Mr. Grinch. You really need the Lord. You never sing nor pray. The church wants you to go away, oh, Mr. Grinch. Try an inner city church. Mr. Grinch, you really ought to pray. You're an unneeded distraction. You have horrible church fashion, Mr. Grinch. You really need the Lord. <laughs> Not like all of us. You don't follow our traditions, so therefore you're not a Christian, Mr. Grinch. I bet God frowns upon you so. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> But way back in the crowd, a girl saw him do this. Her name was Mindy Luai, and she was very discouraged. She cared a great deal and still had faith like a child. She knew the cringe could be rescued, no matter how wild. The rest of the church? Well, they didn't think so. If he decided to come back, well, I'm guessing they would say, No! They said his heart was the size of a mustard seed. They said, if we offered to help him, there'd be nothing he'd need. But Mindy, however, decided to pray. She even went out looking for him almost every day. But the Grinch was hiding and was still very angry and wasn't going to forgive them anytime soon, quite frankly. Several weeks went by and Mindy was still searching. Downtown, uptown, where was he lurking? But then one day, on a dark, snowy night, Mindy did find him, and he was in her sight. But wait, 
one moment. Was what she was doing safe? If he saw her, would he eat her, attack her, or punch her in the face? All those stories people told, were they indeed true? Or was there something about the cringe that people never knew? So Mindy approached the cringe and started being very kind. The cringe thought, she's not like the others, and it's blowing my mind. So the very next day, Mindy went back to tell the whole congregation and said, I've invited the cringe back that you people make fun of, but Jesus told us to love our neighbors, so let's try to reflect his love. Some people were shocked, as if they were being convicted, but the fact was everyone had done it, and it was rather wicked. Mindy came through the crowd to give the cringe some advice. She said, Oh, Mr. Crinch, well, you probably know. Some people are unfriendly and they want you to go. But these people aren't the reason we wake up early on Sunday. It's about God and His Son, no matter what some people say. So let's go into the sanctuary and listen to the pastor. And maybe these people will realize a little faster that God's love for everyone is unstoppable. And He calls us to love those who think that's impossible. The cringe looked confused. Was he going to freak? Was he going to break things and ruin our week? But no, no. There was a twinkle in his eye, one that looked like a light bulb, and then he let out a sigh. He said, thank you, Mindy. That was very nice. I've been lost for a while, and you gave great advice. You see, I'm not very scary, I'm not very mean, but people think I'm a furious, ugly, destroying machine. But now that I know the truth about God, I will respond to everyone with a friendly nod. I want Jesus to be my best friend. I want his love towards me to never end. So whatever I have to do to have Jesus with me, help me to do so, Mindy. Help me to see. So throughout the service and at the church picnic, people started warming up to the fact that the cringe was terrific. And about the cringe's relationship with God, well, that's everyone's favorite part. His heart grew seven sizes when Jesus came into his heart. So I have a question for you. This Christmas season, who can you reach that seems unreachable? Who can you love that seems unlovable? Jesus came to seek and to save what was lost. If you're found by Jesus, well, awesome. It's your job this Christmas season to love like Jesus 